Welcome to the first century AD, the epic RPG. It's based on the Mediterranean region's first century, of course. Everything is based, I mean, everything is found in the Bible. We're starting at three taverns. Well, here's the start. This is how we start. We start at three taverns and work our way around Rome, Philippi, the Narrows, the Avatars on, I explained that. Ignatian Way. You have Tarsus and uh, Antioch, Thyatira, Patmos Island Prison, Wadi Akashan, the City of Refuge, the Monastery, Low Plains of Jezreel, Caesarea, Jordan River, Captured, Joppa, Ashdod, Babylon, the Ruins of Avith. The Wilderness of Paran, Mount Shipper, Wilderness of Sin, the Red Sea, Egypt, Syene, Memphis, Alexandria, Serene, Ephesus, Malta, and Sicily. Those are the blocks on the board. Get started. I, I have the rules. See you later. I have the rules, and I'd like you all to keep in mind that I'm printing out better uh, paper. I'm just this is just a prototype, but it starts with the introduction. You're alive. You're really uh, you are all at war with the Gothic nationalist sect. They won. They got you on a 99 year treaty where you cannot have a military for that length of time but you all have spy networks so that's what we're working on you are a spy your game rules quite in depth although i have quick uh quick rules but i just want to go through it like this and i already have a prep sheet something that i already done i'm getting to it but you move up 10 levels because you're trying to, the, the whole point of the game is you're trying to become the emperor. So in order to do that, you have to work your way up through the ranks from a legionnaire. You have to do all kinds of operations. You can advance by moving up 10 levels, 10 street victories. It will give you ex, uh, 10 experience points. 250 experience points will move you up a level. Five successful missions will move you up a rank. It all coincides. It's just giving you the gist of it. Now, if you want, once you start, you want to pick your player. Here's your stat sheet. You want to pick your player's name, his nationality, or her nationality. You all start with five lives. Your hit points will be determined. Everything else, your levels and all will be determined. Your emperor ranks is legionnaire, but each time you're star, that's why it's good to have a pencil. And your experience points, this guy's fresh. His armor rating is at 504. And uh, there's your denarius. It's not money or gold. This is what they call it in that era, so I'm just running with it. But it's money. This is how much debt you're in. <clears throat> These are the list of things that you are immune to. It sounds complicated, but it's a really fun game. Your special affiliation, of course, that's the groups, your nationality perks, and then your jobs. You don't get money from going around. You have to land at spots and find a job. You may have a job as a grave digger. Maybe it's 45 denarius. But each time you land at the spot, that's how you get paid. So if you got a job at Alexandria you know, as a, you know, a grave digger, like I said, you're paying 100 denarius. Each time you land, you get 100 denarius. You can only get up to four jobs. And each job you put how much where it is and how much you get. You know, I got a surgeon job, tower worker, tax preparator. But anyway, getting back, each of these Na nations have nationality perks 
If you want to be an Arabian, here's what you can do for one time during the, your lifespan, all five lives. You can go visit the synagogue without having to land on the narrow block. Now, that means well, the synagogue is for your experience points. You get experience points each time you land here. This is a dangerous strip. Although this is the main quest, this is how you gain. This is the perk for going down this boulevard, but the streets is where all the trouble lies. Those are to be the turret sized cars and you may run into a lion. You may run into a gladiator. You may run into poison. A lot of different scenarios. So I want 350 cards for the streets, 310 for the uh, quest. So, of course, it's a long game. It's not an overnight game. But getting back. Uh, all right. Say, for instance, you want to be a Babylonian. You can add one extra life to your stats. So instead of five, it's going to be six. Like I said, each each nationality has perks. Uh, let's go one more. Just the kicks and giggles. Uh, all right, how about the Persian? You want to be a Persian, you add an additional 250 points to any weapon in your inventory so you don't have to use this perk until you get situated all right getting back to this real quick before i forget your weapons will be on the next page and you see where it says registered you just put a check or whatever because if you don't have your weapons registered and you stop at the monastery you're going to get that unregistered weapon taken if you get stopped at the monastery and you have illegal herbs like palestinian buckthorn the the herbs there's no drugs in this game but the uh the herbs of that region and that era i made some of them illegal but the only way to get off your illegal items because this is a this game is kind of to me is real life you can make your own decisions it's good or bad you know you can run with a guy you can run with the crew but you cannot run a quest and both players get the same item you have to split it up but it get to that too but anyway if you don't get stopped at the monastery and you have a hundred thousand denarius of uh hyssop whatever the only way to sell these things is the ruin of a vif. You land here, you can get off all your illegals. But if you have a partner that wants to buy stuff too, boom, go ahead. All right. Let's move on to the next page. I think I should get this out the way first. You have experience points that helps you. Your victories help you. Your armor rating, of course, keeps you from getting destroyed. Completed quests, and these are all letters showing you how it looks on the game page. You know, I mean, on your stat sheet, rather. Your stat sheets right here uh, will show you also all your items. So you had 20 waters. Waters is the most important thing to me. I don't know, but. And then you got your haversacks or your. Uh, bags you got to put your bags in you can only have so many items you know so it's all explained in the rules and as a matter of fact i appreciate y'all looking at this but as a matter of fact here's another part of this this is the guidebook this is the traveler's guidebook you want the land here at boom low plains of jezreel all right that's where we are you landed there we look through the catalog. That's our time. I mean, three taverns and everywhere you go, you'll see it. Ignatian Way. So we're going to find the low plains of Jezreel. Which is right here. Let's make sure we're not on the second page of it. All right, Jezreel, what you got to offer? Various things, swine tails, that's for alchemy, millet grass, 
you get your staffs, your weapons. It does a certain amount of damage, and of course you can advance it, but you're paying that. Uh, let's see if you find a job out here. Your gemstones, good for your gems because at the end of the day, you have a lot of special items and weapons in this game. And you can add gemstones to it and make them stronger. There's a teacher job. So you pay 390 denarius. Each time you land here, you're going to collect 390. That's how you get paid. You can really get rich. You really get rich. Here's an animal trainer job down here for 400. All right. Well, anyway, uh, let's peruse through this and I'll show you something else. After you cover the whole catalog and you work your way to Sicily, yes, Egypt, your best thing to do is take the time. But anyway, once you're done with Sicily, and keep in mind, all these towns, some towns may have more, you know, some towns may be five or six pages, some towns may be one page. But then here's your alchemy guide in the back. This tells you all the diseases, ailments, infirmaries, what you can make. Uh, let's see. Let's just show you what it is all about. All right, here's your wine skin for hit points. If you want to up your hit points, you're going to need these wine skins. If you want to restore 10 hit points automatically for two months, now also. Each time you pass here, boom, that's a month. I got it as months because when you're sick, some of these symptoms take effect rather quickly. You need to get yourself healed up. Because if it lasts five months and you're dead, then you can only, you got five chances to get it. But anyway, so if you want to do that for two months, you just get your water, olive oil, pitch, Salt, but keep in mind you have to have a mortar and pestle in order to do alchemy. So if you don't have those, you don't you can't work it. Let's keep it moving right here. Uh yes, yeah, your blunt weapons. Do you want to fortify your hammers, your axe? Then this is what you do. You add ingredients, and see these ingredients are are found throughout the catalog, like I said. Let's keep going. Let's find the diseases now. And these are hallucination bombs. These are bombs that you can make. Like, you know, hand bombs. Just toss them. Whatever. But uh, unusual wine skins are special items too. Here are your diseases. You can get caught up in the streets. Let's say the stripe. You flip the card and says, oh, man, you're now an alcoholic or whatever the case may be. You go find out why alcohol and what is alcoholism. What can you do to prevent it? Month one, you lose 50 hit points and lose 100 fighting. So when you go around that first month, you didn't get help for alcoholism. You deducting 50 hit points and 100 fighting. Continues like that. Month 11. You're cured naturally. Just, you know, one of those things. You have blindness, boils. I think the most deadliest disease out in this game is the Ebola. You have deafness. Demon possession is rather deadly. Now, uh, also, it's nothing. Um, I don't have ghosts, goblins, and all that other crazy stuff in it. You know, I understand people like it. But this is the real world game. And everything is a, everything is a human experience. There's nothing fantasy about it. Demon possessions. Of course, you know demons are real. But that has been going on. That was going on in the first century. That's why I inculcated it. But here's Ebola. After four months, you're dead. So your hit point drops each at the month three, your hit point drops to 100. So your first month, you're going to have to go to the city of refuge, which is right here. Stay there until you're cured or death occurred. Yeah, that works. That works how it's supposed to. 
how it's supposed to be. I said to look at it again and make sure I didn't mess up. You have epilepsy, fevers, hemorrhages, uh, starvation, malaria, leprosy. Every Leprosy is kind of tough, too. Do you die from it? Lose 50 hit points until you are cured. Uh, well, here's, the, here's the, um, like I said, the gist is, man, um, you got to travel around trying to build up to be an emperor, but you need a lot of different things in order to make it work. Now, here are your special items. The special weapons that's found throughout the game. The arm and staff is kind of a treat. You have three pieces in the staff located throughout the whole region. Once you put them together, you're unstoppable for a little bit. Here are the perks of it. That's how much it costs if you want to sell it, which I don't think you can. But this is the damage. Plus, you have regular damage and then you have elemental damage. You got chill damage, you have shock damages, and then sometimes you have burn damage. But these are the damages. So if you are immune to regular damage, you still may not be immune to chill damage. So that's how these things work. The shock and fan axe. I think the most elusive weapon, the wineskin of invincibility, the papyrus scroll, which means you can get the expansion. The blue emerald bow, the shield of the chameleons. Each one of them have a little brief story on what happened and how they came about. But the most elusive weapon is the breastplate of justice. That's what you want. Although you can get the ga uh, Gauntlet of Alchemy or the Sword of the Nine Knights. Then there's the uh, Volcanic Kyrus, which is beast too. But this here, this is what people die for. Now this game has been 17 years in the making. I've made it 17 years ago. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with this version right here. <clears throat> When you get that breastplate and you get all those gems put in that breastplate, you can summon the Viathan for one encounter. You become invincible for one encounter. And then you got deadly attribution damage. Your weapon can cause, you can cause opponents hit points. I just read it wrong, but you can read it again. The Executioner's Sword, the Cabeza Shield. Right now, game, how I did it, to roll for your hit points, like I said, it's in the rules, I didn't throw the rules away, did to roll for your hit points, you take the d20, and you multiply times a thousand, so if it's eight, my hit points would be eight thousand, just simple stuff, to roll for your fighting, you take the D20 and then you multiply times 100. So 100 times 19 is 190? Whatever. Anyway, after you fight, let's say you're in the streets, you land in the streets and you fight. Now keep in mind, I can't show the streets cards because I haven't printed anything out. The street card or the quest cards. But after you fight, if you start at four, 650 hit points and you don't have any water when you're leaving out of the streets, your current hit points go here. That way you don't lose track. But here's the catch of the whole situation. Let's say you just finished battling in the streets. And then you roll. Let's say you battle in the streets and then you roll a three. So you go out, well, of course you're going clockwise, three. Tarsus is the move backwards, the amount you just left from. You're back. Now if you don't have any water and you're not ready, you will be screwed. Like I said, I hate when I get on the streets and roll a low number. All right, nine. All right, I'm going out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Monster. Oh, good thing I don't have any illegal drugs on me or weapons. All right, well, 
Last little bit of info I do. Let's, let me see if I can go about it again. Um, anything else I need to mention? Like I said, man, uh, the ambassador is the DM. We're calling them the ambassador or her. Whoever it is controlling the game is control the street uh, opponents, control the quest opponents, and do the regular DM things. All right. Uh, as far as your sacks, your haversacks and all that, you're going to need a sack to put stuff in. But when you go around the board... And you don't have room, you can rent houses, places, tents, dwellings, shelters. Let's go about catalog a little bit and show you what's in here. All right, we were just at Low Plains of Jezreel. All right, let's go back there. All right, there's an English Mastiff. You can buy animals. You're going to have some bread, but there's the rules and regulations. You can find them. M Mara, whatever is that, I can't pronounce it, but that's illegal. But you can earn two times the amount if sold at the ruin of the Biff. I mean, the Biff. So you get two times, you get three, three grand, or whatever. I can't add today. But all of these uh, hippopotamus skins. Let's see if I can find a house. I know Babylon got plenty of them. Ashdod might. Joppa does. The Magistrate. That's who registers your weapon. Sometimes they pimp, but the magistrate is the only way you can get that check mark put on your weapon side. If your magistrate does not have it, you cannot register. You know? All right, let's get one more. Uh, I wish I had the quest game because this is like... 30 different groups that you got to watch out for. The Omega Gill, the uh, Egyptian Raiders, the, oh man, Arcade Remnants. Oh, there's so many. The Practerian Guards, you got to watch out for the Romans too. They don't play. All right. What you think? Some of these weapons too. Like the Canaanite longbow. It does different elemental damage. Like I say, shock, burn, and chill are the only three elements. Because they don't have... It's not a fantasy game. But these are all actually, you know, you get the cold chills. Or, you you know, you can get shocked or you can get burnt. So that that's, that's the uh, premise behind that. The Blasphemer Hammer. Some of these special items are in here. It, it, this one does skull hemorrhage damage. You got to roll two dice when you using this in battle. Two to seven, you strike opponent, instant death. Eight to twelve, you strike yourself, instant death. Blasphemous hammer. <laughs> but hey, man, listen, if you really want to battle somebody and you are like, oh my God, I'm going to die either way, I would take that chance, man. Got five lives. But yeah, uh, you got a brick maker job. You got a chariot driver's job. There's wax. Everything you need to be successful. Okay, you get the money changer at the ruin of a vif. Like I said, this is the only way you can buy. I mean, sell illegal items. You can also buy the B section of the arm and staff right here. Once you get the B section, then you only need the A and the C, and then you have the arm and staff. So, yeah, uh, there's a mortar. They normally run 1,500 denarius or uh, more around there, so you might see some uh, merchants. They'll pimp you. They try to get over. And then uh, uh Egypt, big town. Egypt has a lot of different things. Now if you read certain things, you can add uh items. 
Let's say, for instance, you read the way of the way to African cities. It's going to cost you seventeen hundred thirty thousand dinars, but for one encounter, the Ethiopian destroyers encounters do half percent damage. So if you got a problem with the Ethiopian destroyers, it might benefit you. They have a lot of different perks for helping you stay out of trouble. But yeah, uh, here's some more reading. Here's some more reading. Let's see if I can wrap this up. Sicily is, uh, this requires ore. So you're going to need gold ore. You're going to find ore. Everything is in the game. The ore, the iron, the lead, everything you need is in this game. You have sling stones because you have slings. You, you have, uh, You have a group recruiter. You can join any of these groups that's out here. You know, but you just don't want to join any group, man. Just, these people are crazy. Let's see if I missed anything. These are rules of engagements. This is the rules of how to carry about going around battling. And when you have quests, certain quests might look like this. You know, you have to read it. Uh, 